Now, let's continue our brute force attack discussion. This time, we'll talk about preventing authentication failures brute force attack. Take note, preventing a more advanced identification and authentication failure vulnerability is not covered in this video. We will also introduce the advantage of using web application firewall over other web attack prevention. We will also do some lab demonstration. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Tina Armada, and I'm the internet. Action star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. One of the simplest way to help prevent brute force attack is having a strong password or create a strong password policy for your applications. What we want is the brute force attack script or tool will have a hard time cracking the user password. Recommended to have at least a number, an upper, a lower letters, and a symbol. So for 10 characters, how long it will take for the hacker to brute force the password? Around few years. Well, still depends how fast the attacker system resources. There are many login authentication policies available out there that helps prevent brute force attacks, such as multi-factor authentication, blacklisting of certain IP address and countries, and using of CAPTCHA and a policy that only accepts login from a known web browser also help prevents from automated attacks. Now, how do we prevent brute force attack using web application firewall? Basically, most of the above mentioned are available on most WAF. In F5 Web Application Firewall, it has a session-based protection where it counts the number of times a client attempts to log in with the same browser session. A client would be blocked if it reaches the defined number of failed attempts and he or she can only re-log in after a specific amount of time and by default, it's 600 seconds. It also has a dynamic brute force protection. Basically, it mitigates based on statistical analysis. You can specify detection criteria such as minimum failed login attempts per second, percentage increase of failed logging attempts, and many more. It also has rate limiting functions. A huge advantage of using web application firewall is you can centralize the authentication policy of various web applications. We added an appliance in our topology. There is now an F5 web application firewall between the two nodes, a WAF between the attacker and the target web server. But first, we'll show you the WAF security policy and we'll create a brute force configuration. Then from the attacker side, we'll test manually if the brute force configuration with capture redirection really works. Then we'll run a brute force Python script and we'll see if the attack would be detected and or mitigated. I'm here in our F5 Big IP Security Policy page and I already created a new policy named Brute Force Prevention and it's already associated to our virtual server named Sticks underscore VS. Now we'll create a new Brute Force configuration. So what I'm gonna do is I will go to Application Security and then I will select Brute Force Attack Prevention. Now I'm here in the Brute Force Configuration page. Next is I'm gonna click create. The first thing I will do is I will select login. So this is the login page uh, that I already created. And to view the configuration, all I need to do is click view. And as you can see, I specify the login URL slash login. I also specify both username and password parameter names. These are username and password. I also added the expected parameter name because Every login attempt, it will create a new parameter name. This is CSRF middleware token. And after successful login attempt, 
it will redirect us to a new page or another page. That is why under expected HTTP response status code, I added 302, which is redirect. So I'm going to click cancel. Next is we're going to configure the source based brute force protection. Sometimes this is called session based brute force protection. This depends on the F5 firmware version. Now we're going to detect the attack based on the username because we're going to brute force the admin account. So as you can see, it's already enabled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this value instead of three minutes. I'm going to change it to five failed in login attempts. Okay. And I will also change the detection period to one minute. So basically it will trigger, uh, on the six failed login attempts, it will redirect us to a captcha page, okay, which is this action. We're also going to adjust, um, this maximum prevention duration to five minutes. So basically what will happen is this will block or it will do the capture duration against the attacker and the attacker, he or she will only be able to re -log in five times after five minutes. So I'm going to click create. Okay. And I'm going to click apply policy. And I will also make sure that our enforcement mode is set to blocking. So going back to this page, I'm going to click learning and block settings and uh, we'll verify the enforcement mode. Okay. So it is in blocking mode. Now let's test. So let's go back to our Kali Linux. And uh, from here, we're going to do the testing. And before that, let's go to the event login page. So as you can see, there are no events yet. Okay. No records display. So here in our stick show site, I'm going to click sign in. Okay. And this will take us to the login page and I will attempt to log in using the admin user and uh, the first login attempt. Okay. I'm going to click login. Okay. And uh, we'll do the second login attempt. Okay. Two characters for the second login attempt, third characters for the third login attempt. And for the fourth login attempt, four characters. And for the fifth login attempt, five characters. Now we're not getting to the captcha yet because it will only trigger on the sixth after the fifth. Okay. So this will be the sixth login attempt. So click login. And as you can see, we are now redirected to the captcha page. Now, if we go to the event page, okay, we'll see all of the attempts. So this is the login page. First attempt, second attempt, third, fourth, okay, and then this fifth attempt. Now, if we go back and then enter the code in the captcha, the, the image, okay, so I will enter for PT. I'm gonna click submit. Okay, so we went back to the login page. Okay, but if we go to the event page, we are now seeing that we are getting the violation, and the violation name is brute force maximum login attempts are exceeded. Okay, so if I click the link, okay, it says input violation, attack type is brute force attack. And if I click the occurrence, okay, it tells us that we have exceeded the threshold of five. So five out of five within the detection period, one minute. And as you can see, the apply block settings are block and alarm. Now we will run our brute force attack Python script. We are still in the blocking prevention duration mode, and we don't want to wait for five minutes. So I have to delete the brute force configuration and I will just create a new one. So I'm going to click create and I will select login and I will just change detection period to one minute, maximum prevention, maximum prevention duration to five minutes. And I will just keep the, uh, after three failed login attempts and uh, after three failed login attempts, it will, um, do the alarm and captcha. I'm going to click create, and then I'm going to click apply policy. Okay. Now, before we go to our Kali Linux, the attacker host, let's go to our event logs page. And as you can see, there are no records. It's still empty. Okay. So let's go to our Kali Linux. So here is our terminal. And all I need to do is run our Python script 
bruteforce.py. So I'm gonna hit enter now. And uh, after a few seconds, there you go. Uh, it has detected that the admin username is existing. Now let's go to the event page. So I'm gonna click the third uh, tab and then I will refresh this page. And as you can see, the first few events here is this. This is all about the registration. Uh, this is when it detects the admin user account is existing. And uh, the other events, this is where it attempts to log in um, the admin account using a random password. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this page. And as you can see, we are getting a blocking event. Okay, and uh, if I look at the violation, it says brute force maximum login attempts are exceeded. Okay, and uh, if I click this link, we'll get more detail, such as type input violation, attack type is brute force attack, and severity is error. Now, if I click the occurrence, okay, you should see that uh, the username is admin and the detect fail logins is four. This is after the defined uh, number of the failed login attempts. Okay, detection period is one minute and the maximum prevention duration is five minutes. Okay, and that's, since this is a script, uh, it's still sending login requests if we go to the Kali Linux. Okay, but if you look at the event log, as you can see, it's always blocked by our F5 web application firewall. Another reason why you want to use web application firewall instead of manual brute force attack prevention is it's not just brute force attack that we want to protect our web applications from. There are dozens of web attacks out there. Would it be easier and more effective protecting against those attacks using a dedicated appliance such as web application firewall? So that's how we prevent basic authentication failures brute force attack using F5 WAF. We can also use other solutions such as Akamai, Imperva, and many others.